they left the slaves. And that makes some sense about how humans uh, uh, evolved. But again, I, I'm going to say this. I, I've seen pictures of abduction cases where people were the same way with cattle mutilations. There's pictures of human mutilations uh, in Brazil, uh, Argentina, uh, the rainforest, yeah. uh, the Amazon, where they had their sex glands, their tongues, their heart removed laser precision out in the middle of nowhere and that is what is scary now that tells me that we are being visited by something that isn't on the friendliest side and then all the people have gone missing in the national forest is a huge amount in the last uh, 80 years but not just then how about the people who vanish in the cities vanish when they're out on a car or a road trip they just vanish no record of them now, yeah, there's serial killers out there, but not n- not tens and tens of thousands of them. Yes, I can I can see they they come up with a lot of this. Uh, they they call it human trafficking. Uh, that's big time, and that's something we should be very alarmed about. That could be part of it. Uh, we don't know if it's total alien. Uh, it, you know, there's a lot to do with human against human. But I've heard those stories of human mutilations. Uh, I wonder about what types of aliens are doing that. Uh, the ones that I ran into, especially the hybrid, uh, I, I think some of them have, they call it the source. Uh, I'm not going to get religious here, but uh, they, God, they call it the source. And like this, uh, this hybrid I ran into in the Sedona, I asked her, I said, uh, do you believe in God? And she says, she said, no, your God never has helped me. So they believe in something that's a source of all uh, dimensions and all universes. Some, some central, even scientists say there has to be some, you know, dense energy that, that really made all of this happen. Uh, and they're saying that maybe the, uh, they said this on Ancient Aliens, they said maybe the aliens are working uh, with God, are, are the source, and they are doing some of the work of what, of what, is being done around the planets and around the, the universe is, is they're transplanting life, making life. And you're, you're talking about this uh, author, Stitchin, who wrote about the uh, Anunnaki and uh, Sumerians right. who, did, who did that. They said that they, they, uh, they did a genetic change of the, of the I guess, prehistoric man, uh, Neanderthal. They, they changed that, that uh, being into the... Uh, homo sapien we are today. Uh, I heard a lot about that. I believe that. I believe we've been around a long, long time. Uh, that was 65,000 years ago when all that took place. But I believe that uh, the human race has probably been here maybe before, millions of years ago, because they're finding things under the ground that doesn't, doesn't fit the scheme of things, the academia. And I think academia is finally starting to learn things. They said now the Big Bang may have not occurred. It could have been something else that happened. So they're changing their minds about a lot of stuff, Gary, and uh, it kind of confuses me. Uh, I'm trying to get my own answers and finding out what's going on uh, that's happened to me. And I've had these apports. Have you heard of apports or aports, if I'm pronouncing it right? Yes. Yeah, I, I've got, I got a few of those. I have some uh, little plastic round uh, tabs. They're about five eighths inches in diameter and about a sixteenth inch in in uh, thickness. And through I think Ju- July of, uh, of 2012 through February of 2015, I got four of them, and they they found in unusual places uh, in front of me on the floor where I can see them. And I got them. I got uh, pictures of all my A ports, and I, I, you know, I, I, I do. I, I look at these things like somebody's trying to send me a message. Uh, somebody's telling me they're still keeping track of me. Maybe I don't know. Uh, and I keep looking for strange people to maybe come up to me and and talk to me. Uh, I don't want to see the men in black. I don't want to see that. That uh, that's another whole story in itself. Uh, I've never seen one, but my brother-in-law, sister, and my mom have seen a, a, a man in black uh, in behind my yard outside of the fence with a long black 
a trench coat and with a black hat on. So they saw it behind my, my house, but I, I never saw uh, the man in black or, or ever have. I might have taken a picture of one of the Eureka Springs Convention one time, and I got a picture of those two, and everybody thought they were weird. They just disappeared. They didn't have a car or nothing. They just they just come and they went. Well, and yeah. they were interested in Jim Mars. Remember Jim Mars? Oh, yes. Yeah, they were interested in him uh, for some reason. Well, you know, the, the men in black, here's my feeling. I had Susan Shepard on Friday, and we were talking about Mothman, and we were talking about UFOs and, and stuff that happened in her area in Virginia. And and what was also really interesting about men in black is, you know, that there was reports of men in black in her area back in the 60s, for example, mid, late, mid to late 60s. But the, the men in black were kind of weird. They, they, the, 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 they wore the black, you know, shirt, the black coat, the black pants, the black shoes, right? But they came right. up in like a brand new late 50 vehicle. And then there was reports of other ones, you know, uh, men in black. They weren't driving. If you would think of like if they were the government, they're going to be driving the most current vehicles. They were driving vehicles that were like 20 years old, which kind of was interesting. But then I started realizing when we sent out a TV wave, or we did before we went to, you know, the systems we're using nowadays, but we're still transmitting. But our signals, depending on how far out in space is going, could take anywhere from 10 to 20 to 40 to 100 years to reach its designation. And maybe when these aliens see the, like, Leave it to Beaver or these cowboy shows or whatever, you know, it's taken many years to get there. So then all of a sudden they start seeing our gangster movies, right? And all this stuff. And they think this is the type of car they, the, the, the people on earth drive. So when they come in and visit us, that's what they manifest vehicles, what they see, uh, what, you know, from our TV shows, that get beamed out and they're like 20, 30, 40 years behind. And that's why the, the, the reports of the men in black were wearing slick hair, uh, you know, kind of like the, you know, late 50s style. Very robotic from from all the indications that people have run into. Yes. I've never run into a man in black, but I, I have run into some, some uh, people that looked like they were officials, like FBI. Uh, I was at a shop, and I was at this shorts rack at Cabela's, and I was picking out shorts. I was going out to Sedona, matter of fact. Uh, I guess they might have known this, but here comes a guy in, he had a $500 suit on, and he was about 6'2". He looked like the FBI type, and he stood there at that rack staring at me for about a whole minute. And I felt very uncomfortable. I thought, what's going on with this guy? Why is he doing this? Uh, he doesn't look like the guy, the type of guy that's shopping in a sportswear area. And, and he walked away, and I went and followed him, and he disappeared. That's not the only person that I've seen that I tried to track down, and they disappeared, so... That could be the modern version of the men in black, but he didn't say nothing to me. His eyes, his eyes said it all. It kind of scared me, uh, freaked me out a little bit. But uh, they, there's two, there's two stories about the men in black that I, I get. I, like I said, I've never, never seen one up, up close or anything. I, I saw one in a vivid dream. I was on another planet, and uh, I was, and there were some other kids. This must have been when I was 14. Uh, that this must have been a vision I had. Uh, after that abduction, I went to another planet, and there was two sons. And I looked up, and there was two sons, and I was playing with these kids. They, so I must have been, like I said, young at that stage. And I sat there with a young girl, and I looked at her, and I said, do you believe in God? And then she looked up, and, she, and there was a guy dressed in black, and he had a black hat on. I guess this is the closest I've seen to a man in black in a very vivid dream. He motioned for me. He said, come on, you're done. And I looked down, and there were some little toys that were cut out out of uh, either it looked like glass or stone. I picked them up, put them in my pocket. And this this man, this man in black, he told me to walk down this, this, this uh, it was a boardwalk like. And I walked down it, and I come back into my bed. And I, I first thing I did was reach the, I reached in my pocket, and I tried to get these little toys out. I said, now I got proof. And I got, I got it in my pockets, and nothing was there. So... Uh, yeah, that's the closest I saw that. But there's two, I guess, two stories of that. Are they, are they black operations people, or are they alien? 
there's I think there's a there's an argument, not an argument, but a, a exchange of ideas of who these these men in black really are. Uh, I can equate that with one of the one of the the I guess uh, events that I had in, in Sedona. Also sitting there watching a car pull up. It was a late fifties Chevy Impala station wagon, just like you were saying. Uh, and then they come out and they dress like they were in the fifties. The little girl was in a little dress that looked like 50. She looked like about five years old. She had little white shoes on. And then she had that leash around her neck, and it had jewels in it. And her dad, I guess it was her dad, he never looked at me. He sat there in that bench and never looked at me one time. And I kept looking, and this little girl barked like a dog. And I said, wow, that's amazing. And I went back in, and I come to myself. I guess I was kind of dumbed down from the, the energy from this this. Uh, could have been a dimensional thing that I saw, but uh, you know, go back to the car, the old car. I, I saw that uh, in in a real. And I was awake, and it was about one o'clock in the afternoon uh, that that during that time in Sedona. So I actually saw that with my own eyes. So yeah, there's uh, are, that's dimensional stuff. We're being bombarded by dimensional beings, interdimensional beings. Uh, we're being, and I think they come through wormholes. Uh, my brother and my sister and I sat and watched some some orbs come straight down from the sky, and they seemed like they come out of a portal, and they they come down bright, and then they took off real fast, and there was a couple of them that come down and then took off. So there must have been some kind of a portal that might have been something like five miles from my house uh, that I could see in the sky. So. Maybe they're coming through portals that they make themselves, wormholes, uh, and then dimensional. Uh, I guess is something all different. Uh, it's a it's a very thin veil. Uh, they break that veil and they come through into our world. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to see those dimensions. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's scary because you know it seems like in the last year there's more people coming forward about being abducted, more people coming forward about saying they see aliens or UFOs, uh, more than ever. I mean, Peter Davenport from the UFO Reporting Center has gone crazy about how many reports he's getting now more than ever. And then uh, my uh, good friend Mary Joyce, that runs the Reporting Center for UFOs and, and cryptics out of North Carolina, uh, same thing. She's getting a lot more reports, but... She's getting more of the negative type of reports of these aliens and not the friendly type of people or aliens, I should say. Or, or can you can you divide? Is it the the women that are having more of the horrible things, or is it the men? It's a mixture. Uh, it's a mixture. You know, like I was going to have a police sergeant from the Portland the police department on my show back maybe eight nine months ago because him and his wife last summer were near Tillamook, Oregon. They were out camping. They were out in the woods somewhere. And this guy has been with uh, the the police department in Portland now for 20 years. He's a sergeant. He was going to come on my show, but then he decided, no, I better not because I'm getting close to retiring. Uh, And he was worried about that. But he claims that he saw aliens, you know, off uh, a dirt road walking. And when they noticed that he saw them, they disappeared. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, there's a, there's a strong evidence that aliens are invisible. They can be, make themselves invisible, come in your house, and maybe that's where the poltergeist activity and the paranormal activity could be. Maybe half of it's caused by that. I have a ghost hunting friend, uh, that, that writes books, and I told, I told him, I said, you know, these poltergeists and these ghosts could be aliens or interdimensional beings that are coming through. Your mind is requesting them. Your mind's energy is requesting these things to come through the barriers. So you think you're seeing ghosts, but we don't know if they're dimensional entities or we don't know if they're aliens because aliens can be invisible. Yeah, uh, I, think I they know could. that an alien can be invisible because I, I had a buddy. He stayed at my house after Eureka Springs. He lived way up north in Illinois, and he stayed at my house after the, the meeting we had down in Eureka Springs with the UFO convention. And he... He said his feet and his ankles was rubbed up against pretty hard, and he said it woke him up, and he looked around. He couldn't see anything, and then he said it happened again, so he said he couldn't sleep the rest of the night. That was in my spare bedroom, 
And uh, he didn't tell me for three months because he thought,